I wonder why I never asked before. What shall I do today? What is my duty in this world? To whom my dues to pay? I wonder why I never cared for others' suffering close to me and sometimes even caused by me, forgetting my responsibility. I wonder why I never offered to the one who supplies me everything, the slightest contribution, the slightest little thing. I wonder why I was absorbed in silly matters propagated from all the sides of this material world without the sense nor cooperation for anyone except my selfish idea of overlording this material world at the cost of my very values and qualities. I wonder why I was carried away by fashion and consumerism. I wonder why I wanted to enjoy and not to pay for my sexual exploitation. I wonder why I didn't care for this very body or better said, alone to me, alone for a limited time. I wonder why my life so short I cared so little for and ran at highest speed just after glittering iron ore. You see, this age of Kali is giving much to shine. It's usually plastic or some other superficial imitation. It doesn't make no sense nor rhyme. I wonder why I am so stupid. It's shameful to admit that I spent not this life alone, but who knows how many in this selfish pit, where one gives trouble to the other, always trying to exploit or being indifferent in either case. No care or safety, no love. My life, I do conclude, has much of responsibility because I am aware of it. I am the driver in the seat. I go ahead. I make the turn. I speak the word. I deny to learn. My ego is the chief commander. My selfishness
gives the agenda. Where will I turn with such a record? I'm doomed to stay within the very same limitation created by me. Where's my merit? How will I deserve to get that love, to become an expert, to leave illusion, become a saint, serve the devotees, and be everyone's friend? And submit my self under his direction, into the right direction. To take the orientation from where it's meant to be taken, from the light of the sun, the orient, which shows us our true existence beyond material limitation. So now I come to you, my guru, my dear Srila Prabhupada, present my plight in front of you, request from all ignorance to part. Just make good news, just make good use of this fallen soul. It's but your grace alone which can change the destiny on which I have bent my soul. Forgiveness and causeless grace, that gives my soul some hope. I've turned to Thee, Divine Lord, Your name to chant and thus be free. I really want to be an instrument of your divine consideration that I may give some use and hope. Some understanding of our true destination. My Guru Deva Prabhupada he came to our world to serve us with humility. Even though our life was quite absurd. He didn't care. His love was pure. He did not see the dirt in us. He simply saw the shining soul and cared for us. His care and love, his preoccupation, his teachings, his domain. <coughs> he invited us to Vrindavan to never ever be the same. He took us by his hand filled our life with grace and even our bellies with prashada from his hands. So now he's gone back to Krishna and we remain behind, lost, sad, in separation to meet again a soul of such a kind would only be possible if they descend by their grace and give us the helping hand to raise us to their chest. <coughs> Prabhupada was an angel. That is no speculation. 
No need to see his wings. Just see the destination. He gave to our life, as he gave us, the name of Krishna and the holy deity, and made us Krishna's devotees. Engaged us in the Sankirtan. There's no end to this, as long as time will tell. Because his mercy will grow, the more that people will know. Because his grace was so unbelievable that he made in this material world a true embassy of the spiritual world. And he gave us passport and visa to journey all alone to that divine destination. Even if the first step was still in Vrindavan, which is already a part of the spiritual world, but where in Vrindavan we could be together. With Prabhupada and many other great Vaishnavas, that is uh, the evidence of his uh, wishes. Prabhupada also wanted to create such embassies in every place in every town and village to save the human race. Prabhupada had, without any restriction, the love for everyone. And thus he showed us that we are not this body, that we are spirit soul, that we really belong to Krishna, that we really have an eternal role and in that eternal role, Sachit Ananda is born, which will give us the Lord's association to all those who are love torn. Because as long as you try to find that love away from Him, in the world of lust, confused and angry, committing many sins. You cannot embrace His divine grace. You have to simply remain behind. the name. Give up all prejudice, all unkindness, and understand that we are all the same, sons and daughters of the Supreme Lord and Master. And we are to learn how to regard each other. And not only to regard, but truly to love. Open the way, the door to above, which will be opened not from our side, but rather from the grace He has descended or He is sending us. But we have to do, we have to pay our price. That pay, price is kindness and submission to the truth, to the law, and the love of His divine transmission. Make it your mission. Make it your life. Give everything you see. Give up your strife for egotistic positioning and simply accept that He will know the best for you. You see, that is surrender in practice. That you surrender that God knows the best for you. 
All you have to do is do what he wishes to you to do. And how do you know what he wishes you to do? Well, read the Bhagavad Gita. He's saying many things which are pretty clear. And if you want to find out more, you find out more. If you want to do what, what the Lord wants you to do, if you want to become an instrument of his love, he will open the doors. He will make it possible. He will take you with him to Brindavan and even above this plane. Because our soul and our body, they both do not belong into this world. Even though the body is born of this world, it is also extinguished within this world. So why make so much of the body? Born and dying, it is simply the fetter, the material combination of matter. So you want to go beyond that. You want to go to the truth of your existence. And the truth of your existence, that is there. It has always been there and it will always be there. The truth of your existence is that you are craving for love. And it is him who has that love in unlimited quantity and highest quality is uh, available to you. So you want this, then you go for it. And the only price you have to pay is that you have to become entirely loving and submissive to what is good for you and others. Right? You don't have to embrace anything which is bad for you or bad for others. Not at all. The time has come for us to awake. To awake to the reality that love is supreme and that we have to live in that love. And then also to understand what offense or what is the wrong thing within this love. Most people will not even think of it. Most people would think that the bad things are bad and the good things are good. They don't see that most of the good things are also bad. And simple living, high thinking, that is really good. Not this competition for material acquisitions. That is not good at all. I'm very thankful you have come here tonight in Göteborg, this special evening on the Kadesi, place our fasting day. So we invited many devotees to join us here today. And now tonight we will go to our farm in Ritala, next to the sacred Radha Kun. It is such a secret and sacred lake that hardly anybody even knows of it in Göteborg. Because it is a mountain lake, it is on top of a mountain. And, but it is so beautiful that it is hardly been imagined. And it is very big. Nobody expects on top of that mountain such a huge lake. I wish you all to read the Bhagavad Gita as it is and to make a careful analysis of how this book actually is the manual of the human form of life. And if you follow that manual carefully, you will be the perfection very close to you. But this is the fact. The manual is given by the author. All the rights are reserved by the author. In other words, we have to believe it that your beauty doesn't come out of nothing. Whatever is there beautiful in this world, the finest of the finest, is nothing but a reflection of the finest and the beauty of the Supreme Lord. If you want to see it another way, I would say rather you are a little bit in the category of somebody but envious. You cannot accept that somebody could be more beautiful than you. And you think that your beauty and your intelligence is the outcome of some evolution that before you were a monkey and now finally you reach to be such an extraordinary, special, intelligent person. And that there's nobody who's caused your greatness. 
And this is a bit of an unreasonable proposal because at least, at least, Mother Nature and Father and Mother are the ones who have brought you into existence. So you ought to already give them the status of superiority. What to speak of the mystic superiority of the Lord of Love. So please take advantage of this human form of life, become a, an activist of vegetarianism and environmentalism and chant the names of God and be very kind with everybody and try to awaken the consciousness of others. You will be grateful for having made that decision because that decision is something which will take you right into the criteria and the merits of understanding divinity. If you want to understand divinity, including your own divine nature, you have to be able to say, you have to be ready to say, yes, I'll be part of it. I'll be part of it. I'll, I'll surrender to whatever sweet will is there for me. And this is a fact we all need to connect to the sweet will of our Creator. Because it is within His sweet will that our destination is perfect where we can swim into the, in the ocean of eternity rather than in this ocean of material nature where everything is very uh, isolated from each other and everything is within the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. And most likely uh, we ourselves have not even qualified for entering into an understanding of the mode of goodness. something very elevated. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Daiva Isha Gunamai Mamai Mayatu Ratyanya. It's very difficult to overcome this material world, but if you simply surrender to me, you can easily cross beyond it. <coughs> so it's a question, what is your relationship with Krishna? You have to make up your mind. It's all up to you. Divine love? 